Welcome back to the kitchen for part three in my series on getting started with do-it-yourself electronics for guitar pedals. Tools. Uh, cheap tools are the way to go, if you ask me. Now, not the stuff that doesn't work, the really crap Chinese stuff, but then again, not the like really expensive, go to, uh, you know, Home Depot and get that brand that's overpriced. Um, these are the tools that I use the most. The mini needle nose and the mini side cutter. I think I paid a dollar fifty nine for this at Harbor Freight, uh, which is an excellent place. Uh, like my heat gun, I paid $14.99, $13.99 for the heat gun. I don't like to use uh, electrical tape. I like to use heat shrink tubing, which is like this stuff here. They have it at different sizes. If anyone knows from a good, cheap supplier to order that from, um, these are, you never have enough of these test lead clips. Uh, like a 30 watt or so soldering iron. You want to keep that tip clean. Clean it often. They have a very affordable desoldering bulb. Uh, this is a pump. I think this cost me, it was like maybe $7. Vacuum pump. Or the braid. Uh, try to use that first to try to save the braid. I'm really cheap. Uh, a great primer I get from Walmart. Uh, you can get into like swirl dipping or swirling with the... There's all kinds of stuff on finishing. I use a toaster oven for drying the primer and the paint. Um, I got an airbrush that I use sometimes, a, a cheap airbrush, and I use a nebulizer pump for the air pump for that that I got at Goodwill for $2. Um, I made a light box out of two old speakers with a low wattage lamp and I put some plexiglass windows in that and that helps for getting around 90 degrees to dry the clear coat. Clear coat doesn't like it when it's like a temperature extremes over 100 degrees. You end up with funky results on the clear. That's the challenge. That clear coat you want to go really light. But you, I'd encourage you if you're going to be doing this hobby well, if you have a computer in the area, I use multiple monitors so I can keep up uh, an image of what I'm working on, the layout, Vera layout, and then on the second monitor, I oftentimes I watch or listen to YouTube videos. So I don't mind, you know, long videos. Uh, that's another important tool is, is patience in this hobby. Uh, when you rush, you regret. And this is time tested. Uh, this is an uh, interesting little thing. If you can find larger, like the Elvis Presley size pill dispenser, um, my wife, I'm luckily, I'm married to a fantastic woman who, she pulls my parts for me, does the bombs, and puts them in here, and then there'll be a piece of paper, and it'll say, well, the, the 1Ks are in Monday, you know, and the, uh, 220 ohm is in Sunday, and you know, they get doubled up, the capacitors gets mixed in with the resistors. She does a fantastic job. I wouldn't have been able to accomplish a fraction of the stuff that I accomplished if it wasn't for my Elvis sized prescription pill. Just, no, my wife, Gonti. She also plays bass for our family band, so uh, I'm doing pretty good as far as the wife and kids department goes. That's why I'm able to. Uh, build as many uh, <coughs> three a year <coughs> pedals as I build. Getting back to business here, tools. Uh, this is kind of a handy little contraption. It's a pill bottle. <laughs> no shortage of those. Pill bottle that I cut down and put a quarter inch female uh, guitar jack in it. And on the other side of that there's color coded wires that I've this is stranded wire, and usually I'll solder on little pieces of uh, the solid core so it, it'll, uh, you can stick them right into that breadboard. Those ended up, I snipped them off, I was doing something else, and like a goof, I snipped them off. But, you know, this, you know, what you would use this for is, um, you know, this would plug in here, and then plug into your amp, and you connect these two leads to the output. Then I have another one of these for the input to plug into the guitar. Um, so that's how I 
get the signal in and out of my breadboards. There is more uh, cool design called the Beavis board, and that is where you have the breadboard mounted on a base, and there'll be an actual pedal box with an input and output jack and pots in there too. Where you, you have pots are built into it, and then there's what they call a barrier strip that has screws. Uh, so you can tap in wires onto those and run them to your breadboard. So that, that's a really cool thing, the, the experimenters board, the Beavis board. Uh, I know there's a certain company that I won't name that came out with something called the Experimental Crate. And I believe it's, it's $5,995.73. It's like a big pedal and you open it up and uh, there's crack cocaine. It's full of, I heard it's not really that pure, it's like pretty much, you know, it's like 60-40 uh, PCP, 60% on the PCP side. So we want to watch out for that. Now the most important element I have found is flux. And I bring this up, I'm going to stop talking about this, I promise. <clears throat> I've brought this up before to much regret and uh, crying and I get these comments like, well, my solder has the flux built into it and things like that. And my solder has the flux built into it too, but I use flux. Um, I hacked for a long time my hardware hacked. I soldered a lot. and. Drinking with this guy, uh, what was his name? He was like a big roided out dude. And I think he was a tree cutter or a plumber or some real macho guy, you know. And uh, he was like, Flex! And I was like, no. He was a plumber because he knew about Flex. And he was like, Why did you just And I was like, What? He was like, Why did you just So I like, brought my iron over and he was like, Get the fuck over here! And then I, I did it, and it was like, holy cow, he's right, you know? So, uh, since then, I've been using Harvey's Plumber's Flux. It's a dollar nine for, like, a big tub of it at uh, Home Depot. And you can get the Electronics Flux, uh, which is, it's like eight bucks for the same amount. And I'm going back to Harvey's. I bought one of these electronic things. I cannot tell a difference. Supposedly, if you use plumber's flux on one of these circuits, you will get anally raped. Something really bad happens. It's never happened to me. I clean my flux off. I've got, I keep these bottles of alcohol around for when I run out of, of beer. And I got thinner and some of those for when I run out of this. But I find that if I, you know, do a little bit of that, hit it with that a couple times with the schnapps, a little Q-tip action, and then maybe, you know, sometimes I use a toothbrush, I get silly. And I use a heat gun too, I've got my heat gun here, so I can, I can dry that off. I socket, I use sockets for all my integrated circuits and transistors, and sometimes the capacitors too. So I don't have to worry about really heat damaging anything as long as I don't get too wacky with it. Um, yeah, tools, they're fun, you know. Let me see what else we got. Unibit. Uh, these are indispensable. Along with your drill bits, you're going to want to get step drill bits. And you can get these cheap. If you go to, like, Home Depot, they have them for, like, 55 bucks. You can get a single, like, this size one. And this is good enough. This is the one I always use the most. Um, they're $6.99 for a single at, at uh, Harbor Freight. And I think this was, I paid like $11.99 at uh, Lowe's or Menards. That's where I got these. But don't pay a lot for your step drill bits. Um, if you can find a multi-pack of real small drill bits and get a cheap Dremel, this is a, a Craftsman. And uh, I find using, using this as a pre-drill is fantastic. It really comes in handy, that Dremel. Um, you know, I got a set of... Regular drill bits here. Don't leave home without them. Cordless drills. Cordless screwdrivers. Uh, I got a Ryobi 18 volt. You don't need a drill press. It would be awesome if I had one, I suppose. But I don't worry, I got to put it in the bathroom. I keep a cup of sponges, and this is like this is 
It's like some kind of sandpaper block that, uh, reusable sandpaper. I use that to clean my iron. I don't really clean it on this part with the sandpaper. That, that's used, so it's really dull. And I tend to, I fill it up with water and I clean my iron on the side with that. And if it gets really funky, like the base, I'll clean with that abrasive. You don't want to use an abrasive on your iron. 30 watt iron, it doesn't really matter. If you're going to invest in an iron, you know, like pay some money for it, make sure that you can get replacement tips. I bought a couple funky irons I couldn't find the right tip for, so it's almost better off just getting like the 399 30 watt, or if you can find it and when it goes bad, just buy another iron. You know, when you're starting out, you don't you don't need a soldering station. Just slap something together to hold it like this. Uh, the Craig Anderton book shows you how to hook up a switch box that has a large resistor in it, and you, you can have it so when you hit that switch, it engages this large resistor, and then it's still running, uh, but it's not on full strength, so I use that. Uh, it's kind of like the idea of having a temperature-controlled station, but it only costs you, you know, five, ten bucks to put together. Um, you know, and as you go along, you'll find yourself wanting more advanced tools. One of the first things I would highly recommend is a, this is a troubleshooting tool. Uh, this is just wire with a uh, jack on it. And on, on the negative, you've got an alligator clip, but on the positive, this is just a probe that I made out of a pen. And there's a capacitor in here, a DC blocking capacitor. And so what you could do, uh, you can use that as a signal tracer. Uh, so when there's a problem, you can plug an uh, audio source, like you could just plug an MP3 into it in the input, and, and then plug this into your amplifier, you know, have this cable going to your guitar amp and then you would plug this onto the negative side and you go right on your jack where that mp3 is coming in and okay i can hear it and you keep working your way down and you get to that part where you don't hear it anymore you know well that's the problem so an audio problem you can work in reverse too uh, with that uh, and in conjunction with that probe this is uh this is a test oscillator, and this is, I, I, this, I cannot recommend this enough. It just produces a tone, and I put a volume control on it with a range switch. Um, and that, I knew when I built them, like, that's cool, I'm going to use it a lot, but man, do I use it. I mean, I, I use that thing when I'm setting up a sound system for the board, I use it that is like one of the most invaluable tools. Uh, that's called the Quick and Dirty Test Oscillator by RG Team. Um, you see, you know, as you, like I said, as you go, you kind of get into more of this wacky stuff. This rig here, I got a video for this. This is a germanium transistor tester. And uh, this is from Geofax, another RG Team creation. And this tests germanium transistors for gain and leakage. Um, so you can look into selecting geranium transistors for a fuzz face and that will take you uh, to that information there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else did I forget here. Uh, you know, a meter. This is going to be like the main thing that you're going to use. And I think I touched on this already. You don't want to buy the cheapest one. Uh, you don't want to buy the most expensive one unless you can afford it, you know, like a fluke. I got the little yellow plastic, like real cheap plastic, they, they're like three to $7 meter. It has a transistor tester on it. Uh, those transistor testers, they don't really make good contact. You have to modify it. So I, I ended up, I bought this, I got this for Christmas. I asked my wife for it. And it's got a transistor tester on it. And still the leads don't, the, it's difficult to make contact. This is a large meter, it's got a little bit more to it. And I honestly, I prefer, this is my meter from Walmart. I think I paid $18.50 for it when it came out. They're like $24.50, probably $26 bucks by now. But uh, this is the one I really love. Runs on two AA batteries. The one thing I really hate is they've got an auto shut off. Beep, beep. It starts beeping at you after like 10 minutes and then it shuts off. It's like unbelievably freaking annoying. Uh, yeah, tools. You know, helping hand. Uh, Proper lighting, you're going to want to have a lot of light. A magnifying tool, you can get 
a jeweler's loop. I know Pig Jimmy uses a jeweler's loop. Um, I wear glasses, bifocals, and that really helps. Uh, I got a lot of halogen lights around the house, like 100 watt, 150 watt halogens. Something like this, if you're fortunate enough to be able to find something like this cheap. This is like a pro Dennis light I got for five bucks at Goodwill. I got a few of these, some, you know, smaller units. It's just got a magnifying lens on the inside of it and a circular fluorescent bulb. Um, if you are going to purchase lighting for your work area, fluorescent is really a mistake. Um, I kind of like fluorescent lighting, but it hums. Uh, same thing with your monitor. You know, when you're doing this stuff, you, it's always good to have a battery laying around uh, to eliminate any. A bench power supply is a nice thing to have. Uh, I've got a video on that, like kind of a real cheese ball, cheap hack version that I did. But I love it. It's two, three years going strong and uh, didn't really cost me much. Let's see, what else am I forgetting here? Yeah, it looks like that's about it. Uh, so, thank you for joining me in my special uh, getting into, getting started with do-it-yourself electronics for guitar bottles. <laughs> that's a mouthful. I wonder how many times I've said that today. Uh, I do like 40 to 60 takes on this because I'm you know, drinking and and the PCP kicks in, I start seeing, I'm looking over there, and I got, you know, Satan on one side, Beelzebub on the other, and I look at a bunch of transistors here. So anyway, uh, tune in for uh, part four through 942. I'm going to be covering, <laughs> should be one more part. I'm going to show off the breadboard a little bit, and uh, wherever you go, there you are. Peace, and keep on.